Hey, thank you so much for joining us. Easter 2020 at home. We are thrilled that you're in the room with us this morning. It's such a big deal that you're a part of what God's doing right here at Mercy City Church online. We are so pumped and grateful that you're here. Listen, we've been praying for you today and, and part of my prayer this morning has been that right where you are, no matter where that is, at home with family, maybe on a run, maybe you're on the bike path, I don't know, it doesn't matter. The bottom line is what we've been believing for is that God would speak to you right where you are in this moment. Because this is a moment where we're choosing to celebrate the resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the thing that's significant about this moment is not the fact that, um, you know, it's like every other moment, it's temporary. But the thing that is so significant about this moment is that it altered eternity. And we're believing that in this moment, you would have a moment where your eternity could be altered as well. As a matter of fact, in just a few moments, we're gonna create a moment so that you can take some inventory of your heart and ask the Lord, what are you saying to me? Where are you drawing me? So that potentially your eternity could be altered. This is the moment that we celebrate the, 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 the life and the death, but the resurrection power where love won. This is a moment that we've been believing for for you for a long time, that God would come to you, meet you right where you are and draw you in to challenge and change, alter your eternity. You know, as I've been thinking this week and prepping for this message and, and, and doing all of the readings of our Holy Week throughout our Holy Week journey, the thing that stood out to me about this morning was, was love and eternity. And as I began to think around that, I was reminded of a scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It's actually verse 13. It says this, three things will last forever for all of eternity. And they are faith, hope, and love. And the scripture goes on to say, and the greatest of these is love. And I think it's so significant that on today, this moment, we celebrate that love won. Let's pray as we move forward. Father, we're so grateful that today we do have the opportunity to celebrate the fact that love won, that love came to earth in the person of your son, Jesus. He paid a price for our lives, took our sin on him, conquered the grave, sin, death, destruction so that life could be ours, so that love could invade our lives and we could experience eternity with you. Father, today I pray that you speak to us by the power of your spirit in a way that you never have before or maybe in a way that we've never heard before. Do in us and through us what only you can. In Jesus' name, amen. So this morning I wanna to talk to you just for a few moments around these thoughts, faith, hope, and love. Because again, I think that in our scripture reading for this morning, we see all three of those things on display. John chapter 20 says this, early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. She ran away and she found Simon Peter and the other disciple the one whom Jesus loved. And she said, they've taken the Lord's body out of the tomb and we don't know where they've put him. Peter and the other disciple, they started out for the tomb. They were both running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He stooped in and he looked and he saw linen wrappings lying there, but he didn't go in. Then Simon Peter arrived and he went inside and he also noticed the linen wrappings lying there. While the cloth that covered Jesus' head was folded up and lying apart from the other wrappings, then the disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and he believed. For until, that, until then, they still hadn't really understood the scriptures that said, Jesus must rise from the dead. 
Then they went home. Verse 11 goes on to say this. Mary was standing outside the tomb crying, and she wept. She stooped and she looked in. She, t- she saw two white-robed angels, one sitting at the head and the other at the foot of the place where Jesus' body had been lying. Verse 13, the angels encounter Mary, and they say, Dear woman, why are you crying? Because they've taken away my Lord, she replied, and I don't know where they've put him. She, returned, she turned to leave, and she saw someone standing there. It was Jesus, but she didn't recognize him. Dear woman, why are you crying, Jesus asked her. Who are you looking for? She thought that he was a gardener. Sir, she said, if you have taken him away, please tell me where you've put him and I will go there to get him. Verse 16, this is the beautiful piece of the scripture. Jesus says, Mary. And immediately she turned to him and she cried, Rabbi. And he says to her, don't cling to me. For I have not yet ascended to my father, but go find my brothers and tell them I'm ascending to my father and to your father, to my God and to your God. Mary Magdalene, she went and she found the disciples and she told them, I have seen the Lord. And then she gave them his message. Faith, hope, and love. Like I said, I think that all three of these things in this portion of scripture are on display. And this is what I want to challenge you with and I want to encourage you with. We are people of faith, faith over fear. It doesn't matter what our situation or our circumstance looks like in this moment. We choose faith because love chose us. Now, let me talk to you for a minute just about this. First and foremost, faith. I think that we see this early on in the scripture because it says early on Sunday morning while it was still dark, I was thinking about the fact that this morning we drove out to this location in the dark and it was pitch black, nothing to see. It was a demonstration and display of faith. And I think that's what was taking place in this moment. Mary was obviously full of faith So much so that even in the dark, even when she couldn't see, even when she didn't have the realization or understanding of what exactly was going to take place, she moved in faith to go pursue who she believed to be her Savior. And I think that in this moment, there there, there might seem to be more questions than there are answers. And so I wonder if in this moment, we wouldn't muster up the faith. The Bible says that faith as a mustard seed can move mountains. And so I wonder if you can't draw on and just muster up a little bit of faith where even when you don't see the answer, even when you don't have the understanding, you know that there is a God on the other side that will meet you in the midst of the unknown in a place of faith. I love this that even in this temporarily tumultuous circumstance, Mary made these moves of faith. She just lost who she believed to be her savior, who she believed to be the Messiah. And she was actually going alone and still in the midst of this temporary circumstance. This moment she chose by faith to pursue Jesus. The Bible tells us that we as believers, we walk by faith and not by sight. She didn't move forward based on what she could see. She moved forward based on what she believed. She moved forward in faith. And I want to encourage you. You may not have the answers and you may not have everything together. And there may again, like I said, may be more questions than answers. But I want to challenge you. Lean into faith. Lean into Jesus. And lean into what it is that you believe that Jesus is saying to you. You might say, hey, Pastor Matt, what what if I can't see? Go anyway. What if I don't understand? Go anyway. What if I don't know what my next step is? Go anyway, because I believe that God will meet you there. I believe that God will meet you there. And I think that we see in this portion of scripture that that's exactly why Jesus paid the price that he did, because he wanted to meet us there. And we see him meeting Mary there. Here's one thing that I want to leave you with on this thought of faith. 
There is no route to an altered eternity that doesn't require travel through some dark nights. There's no route. There's, there's no course of action getting to an altered eternity where something changes forever where you won't have to travel through some dark nights. You might have to uh, walk through some seasons of loss. You might have to walk through some seasons of disappointment. You will walk through some dark nights. But that's how you get to your place of altered eternity. The second thing that I want to draw your attention to is this piece of hope. Remember, we're talking about faith and hope and love today. Hope. The Bible says this, she found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. She ran and she found Simon and the other disciple. And I think that this is beautiful because in this moment, can you imagine the hope that had arisen? Because through the darkness, she chose by faith to go to the place where she felt like she was going to meet and encounter her Savior. And as soon as the sun began to peak over the horizon, the truth was revealed that the stone had been rolled away, that Jesus was no longer laying there dead, but he was in fact alive. Can you imagine the hope that was instilled in her in that moment? So much so that she made the choice to move, to take the message of that moment that seemed to be temporary, but that was actually shifting people's eternities. She was able to choose in hope to take that message to others. And I don't know where you find yourself today, but I'm telling you that making those first steps of faith can ultimately begin to reveal hope. The fact that Jesus is moving in your life and the, the fact that the stone has been rolled away, that death has been conquered, that the grave has been overcome, that your sin no longer has to control you, that disappointment doesn't have to define you. There's hope. There's hope. There's hope for you. There's hope for your family. There's hope for a glorious and a beautiful future. I believe that with, with all that I am today. And I believe that that hope will move you. So here we are, are again, talking about faith, hope, and love. Don't forget, love won, right? Love won. Love conquered sin, death the grave. So here it is. The greatest of these is love. I think this is so beautiful when I observe this peace on love. The scripture tells us, this is Jesus speaking, and he says to her, dear woman, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? She thought he was the gardener. <laughs> Sir, she said, if you've taken him away, my Lord, if you've taken him away, tell me where you've put him, and I'll go there to get him. And then Jesus says, Mary. And immediately she turned, and she recognized him, and she called him by name, Rabbi. And this is the observation that, that, I, that I see in this, and this is the crazy thing. She did not recognize her Savior, her Lord, that by faith she made this move walking through the dark where she had no sight. She was just walking it out so that she could go and pursue her Savior. She saw that the stone had been rolled away and hope had been revived in her and stirred in her. But even still in this moment where she was looking for Jesus, she didn't see him. She thought he was the gardener. The gardener! But here's what I, what I want you to know. That while love may not always look the same, love always sounds the same. It might not look the same, but it always sounds the same. Matter of fact, I think that it's so significant that so many of us, when we're learning to love or to be loved, we actually study the five love languages. Why is that? Because while love may take on a different form, love always sounds the same. There is a language of love. In the moment, even though he looked different, 
He looked and she thought he was the gardener. He sounded the same. I think it's interesting that the Bible says in the book of John, chapter 10, that my sheep know my voice. They may not know the form that I'm taking on, but they will know my voice. <laughs> and the voice of God oftentimes, it's not the, it's not the, the blaring, overwhelming voice. It's that still small voice, the voice that you know because it calls you by name, says your name right where you're at. I love this. He says, Mary, and she responded immediately, knowing that's my Lord, because I know the language of love. While it looks different, it sounds the same. And so in this moment, even where we're at, where life is looking different. I mean, we're all doing church online this morning. Easter Sunday morning 2020 looks differently than it ever has in the history of our lives. But it still sounds the same. It still sounds like Jesus calling you by name. No matter where you're at, no matter what dark nights you've walked through, no matter what ups and downs you've experienced, no matter what faith moments you've had to operate in, stepping in the midst of darkness and experiencing some of those high highs of the moments where you've known that the stone was rolled away. I want you to know this morning that Jesus is calling you by name. The reason that this moment matters in history is because it wasn't just about Mary. It was about you. It was about me. It was about your kids. It was about your grandkids. It's about all generations to come. Love has a language, but that language leads out by calling your name. I think it's also interesting in this moment that she thought he was the gardener. And the reason I think it's interesting is because a gardener knows exactly what to add and what to take away. See, at our house, we're not plant people. Matter of fact, we've been shooting some videos at the house and, and we've gotten several text messages or phone calls or just messages. Hey, I got to know, is that a real plant? Because people know that we don't necessarily do a good job of keeping plants alive. Okay, here's the deal. Spoiler alert. The plant in our videos is fake. It just is. Because we don't know the proper things to add. We don't know when to water. We don't know when it needs, so we don't, all the stuff, we overwater. But I think the beauty of this moment is she thought he was a gardener. And the beautiful thing about it is a gardener knows exactly what to add and exactly what to take away. Why? So that fruit can be produced in an everlasting way. Faith Hope and love. The greatest of these is love. But what did it lead out to say? Check this out. These three things will last forever. Forever. Jesus encountered Mary in that moment as a gardener. So she thought. Calling her by name. Encouraging her. This thing that's taking place, this faith that you've put on display, this hope that you've moved forward in, this love that you're responding to right now, I'm the one who knows what to add in the right moment. I'm the one that knows what to take away in the right moment. And even though it seems painful, it's actually for your benefit. Even though it, 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 it might be successful and good, it is so for your benefit. Every move, every moment, everything, it's for your benefit so that love can continue to win out in your life. And ultimately, not just for a moment. Love one then, but love one now. And love will continue to win. And that's why right now in this moment, I believe that you're sitting watching this video. You may be up doing the dishes. 
You may be running errands. You may be trying to get that crazy kid down for the mid-morning nap. But I'm telling you, I believe love is calling your name right now. Because love wants you to know that the battle that you're facing, that you're in the midst of, he's already won. And he's won it on your behalf. He's won it on our behalf. Love has won and love will always win. And that's what you need to know today more than anything else. You're going to go, I'm sure, hunt Easter eggs or find some way in the midst of quarantine to to find some, some moments of normalcy. And I hope you do. But before you do, and while you do, and after you do, I want you to know that that moment mattered 2,000 years ago because he knew this moment was going to happen. That moment mattered and altered eternity, not just for that moment, but for this moment and for every other moment to come. And while those moments might be temporary, Jesus came and he did what he did, paid a price for your life so that all of eternity could be altered. So I'm gonna ask you this question as we close. The moment that I talked about that was coming for you It's right here and it's right now. Who are you looking for? Like Jesus said to Mary, like the angel said to Mary, who are you looking for? Not what are you looking for, but who are you looking for? I'm telling you, you're looking for Jesus, the person of Jesus Christ, the savior of humankind, the author and the finisher of faith, the one who has good plans for your life, even in the midst of a temporarily trying situation. It's the person of Jesus, and this is your moment. So no matter where you are, no matter where you find yourself, I wonder if you could just try to find a moment of silence and listen on the inside for that voice, for the language of love that's tugging on your heart, stirring your spirit. And as you do, you silence yourself and we take this moment, we make this moment, we observe this moment. I wonder if I could just pray with you to make Jesus the center of your life. Because this price that he paid, the the, the death, the burial, and now the resurrection life, to bring faith, hope, and love, it's for you. It's for right now. So let's pray. Father, we thank you that in this moment you sent your son Jesus to not only take on our sin, and die on the cross, but to raise again, bringing the opportunity for faith, hope, and love, moving us from only a temporary existence that makes cool moments, but to alter us in those moments, to prepare us and take us and be mindful of eternity. So today, We receive Jesus. We receive the price that was paid for our lives. And we apply that to our lives. And we declare that Jesus, as he's calling out to us our names, is Lord, is King, is Savior. And that from this day forward, we would follow the lead of the Holy Spirit as he points us more and more to Jesus each and every day in every way in Jesus name amen